to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Good morning, it's a uh, leap year, of course, today. So, guys, just be very, very careful because ladies could pop out from anywhere and just, uh, just pop the question, which could be embarrassing and if you don't have the correct answer. So thankfully it only happens once every four years. A professor of nutrition and dietetics at the University of Newcastle. Have you seen any people, men running around scared here today? Is that a... No, I, they, I haven't. I think they're all hiding. <laughs> they're smart, they know. Look, we're talking about uh, non-hungry eating today and also six tips for losing weight without fad diets. I call it uh, bored eating because if I get bored, I'm, I know I'm not hungry but I want to eat. Am I alone? Yeah, absolutely not alone. And there's lots of reasons for non-hungry eating. For some people, it's, you know, when they're feeling sad or lonely. For some people, it's actually about celebrating. But what's absolutely true for all of us is that the world is trying to make you eat. So it's not my fault. It's not your <laughs> fault, but you've still got to live with it, unfortunately. So yeah. trying to think about the ways you can not eat when you didn't mean to. You know, I don't know if you've ever been, you know, you've walked past um, a shop where there's amazing smells pumping yes, out. Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah, I've already had breakfast, but all of a sudden I'm hungry. Baker's shops do that for me. And you know the worst is a hardware shop that has a sausage sizzle. Oh, right. Okay. I, I don't know what it is. I know where you is. mean. Yeah, you know exactly. So, yes, I do, and I have. Yeah. Well, the problem is that the reason why those things work is that we're programmed historically to find food and eat it. So we're programmed for smells or sight or things that we know, know are tasty. But you can actually overcome environmental food cues. So are we a little bit like dogs? You know, if you, if you put food in a dog's bowl, their attitude is, look, I don't know whether I'll get another meal. I'm not really hungry, yep. so I'm going to eat it. We're a little bit like that, yes, are we? Yes, absolutely. But you absolutely can resist temptation, but you actually have to think about it. and um, Or otherwise, you're you eat on autopilot. So some of the key new emerging treatments for non-hungry eating, one's called exposure therapy. So essentially you expose yourself to the food in the situation that makes you overeat. So a good example might be eating chocolate or snacks in front of TV. So you consciously tell yourself, I'm not going to eat it. I'm just doing exposure therapy. Most people would do this with the help of a psychologist yeah. <laughs> or, a, yes. or a helpful partner or a, or a health professional. You sit there, you look at the chocolate or you look at the chips. You might even taste one, but then you go and put it away. So what you're doing is wow. you're, you're retraining your brain to learn over time that sitting in front of TV does not mean you automatically eat. And one of the really other interesting studies using imaging of the brain has shown that you can retrain your brain to crave vegetables and fruit. That would be so tough for me because it'd be talking to me going, Todd, why aren't you touching me? Why aren't you picking me up? Don't put me back in the cupboard. But I suppose it's you've got to get tough before things will push through. And the reason why is because it doesn't matter how smart you are or how much you think you can resist temptation, actually none of us can when we're, when we're in these highly cued environments. So if you think a shopping court, a food court at yeah, a shopping yeah. centre... Or, or a fast food restaurant. So I have actually come up with some tips to actually help you avoid avoid that. And the six key tips yep. are on the conversation and I think you're going to link that on your website. We are, yes. But, but first up, I think you need to work out whether you've got a problem. So if you assess your overall diet quality, how healthy you eat, we provided a link to the healthy eating quiz. And if there's some bad news there for you, then it might help you to say, say, right, line in the sand, I'm going to try and eat healthier. So all those years, your mum has told you to do something. Has she been right? Your mum is absolutely right. Mothers are always right. I declare a conflict of interest <laughs> yes. there. But the other things we know that absolutely helps you eat autopilot less is having smaller cups and plates. Yep. So you've got to go to grandma's china cabinet and get out her dinner set when plates and cups were actually smaller back in the 1960s. Claire, you just on, on that, when did the huge plate start to appear? Can you put a finger on the, the time or a decade where we went from having yep. a sensible sized plate to something that's now the size of three or four dinner plates? Yeah, things have really increased since the 1970s and in particular since the 1980s. And it's interesting that that does parallel the rise in, in obesity. So once you get your proper size plate. Portions, yeah. Yep, cover half of it with coloured vegetables. And that's an automatic trigger for the right amount, five serves a day of veggies. Then one quarter is 
carbs, so rice or pasta or potato, the other quarter your lean protein. Then the next thing you need to do is you do have to change your environment so you're not prompted to eat. So if you have, if you do buy, you know, yummy snacks that yeah, call your yep. name, you've got to keep them in the freezer or in an opaque container so you can't see through it. And you keep the snacks you want to eat, like fruit, in a big bowl right you know, where you do right as you walk into the kitchen. Handy at hand for the fruits. The, the lesser healthy options uh, are hidden away. Yeah, don't yep. buy them or hide them away or only buy in the portion that you want to eat. And then if you minimise the number of places that you eat, so yep. only eat at the table, then your brain learns when I'm sitting on the lounge or at my desk at work, I don't eat. That's gotcha. not... And that's one thing that's really cha changed. In Number the four? Remove workplace food displays. So I reckon everyone should protest if there's one of those little things, you know, give me $2 and some of the money will go to charity and yeah. you, eat, you eat a kilo of chocolate. And you think you're We've doing the right thing. Of, got to get rid of those. And then for some people, if a fast food outlet calls your name, then you have to plan your driving or walking route so you don't walk past that till you've managed that exposure therapy. Now, I've met people who've said that if their car drives past a certain fast food chain, it goes in there on autopilot. Oh, really? Yeah, so you have to plan a different route home so that doesn't happen until you're on top of it. And then you might want to pre-record TV shows and with all the, you know, options now, you don't need to watch fast food ads. It's really, really sensible, isn't it? They are some amazing tips for uh, losing weight. And it's good to understand also that whilst we have to take accountability there are logical scientific reasons why we do what we do. So. Absolutely, and billions are spent on advertising and it, and it works. But you can retrain your brain. Imaging studies show it works, but this day and age you have to be onto on the it ball. and aware of it. Claire, thank you very much for dropping Pleasure. in this morning. The Professor of Nutrition and Dietetics at the University of Newcastle, Claire Collins.